In the last lesson, we have looked at how the five different factors affect the speed of reaction. So in this lesson, we're going to look at how each factor can affect the shape of the graph produced. Now the first factor that we're going to look at is that of concentration. So once again, we are looking at a reaction that produces a gas and therefore we can monitor the speed of reaction by monitoring the volume of gas produced um, with time. So in this case, we're going to perform two different experiments. In the first experiment, we're going to use hydrochloric acid with a 1 mole per dm cube concentration. All right, and then we're going to perform another experiment by using a more concentrated hydrochloric acid, um, in particular 2 moles per dm cube. So um, what the graph that you see below is the graph that's obtained for experiment 1. All right, before we go on to sketch the graph for experiment 2, I would like to point out that there are three points in the graph that we need to take note. The first point would be the gradient at t equals to 0. All right, as mentioned, this is called the initial rate. The second point that we need to look at will be the volume of gas produced um, after the reaction has stopped. All right, this represents the maximum volume of hydrogen that we can get from this reaction. And then the third point that we need to look at is the time at which the reaction um, was complete. So this is the third point that we need to look at. Alright, so in any uh, speed of reaction curve, we have to always bear in mind, uh, we have to specially look out for these three points. Now in experiment 2, we are looking at a more concentrated hydrochloric acid solution, in particular 2 times the concentration. So we need to ask ourselves a few questions. The first question is, with a more concentrated hydrochlor hydrochloric acid solution, um, will the initial rate be faster? Obviously. So how do we show that the initial rate is faster? Is by drawing a steeper gradient at the start. The next question that we need to ask is, will the volume of hydrogen gas be the same or would it be increased? Now that we have more, two times the number of moles of HCl, right? However, we need to then look at the question and determine whether hydrochloric acid is the limiting reagent or whether it's in excess. So if we look at the condition uh, mentioned, in scenario 1 where magnesium is in excess that means that hydrochloric acid is the limiting reagent and when you increase the concentration by two times provided the volume stays the same that will increase the volume of hydrogen gas produced by two times as well All right so how do we indicate that in the graph is that the final volume will be two times that of the uh, experiment one. So once we have plotted out the initial rate and the final volume, we can go on to complete the curve. So this is how the graph will look like for experiment two. Let's look at another scenario. This is the same experiment. Um, uh, we have the same exact change in the concentration for hydrochloric acid but right now in this scenario magnesium is limiting all right so we need to ask ourselves the same questions when the concentration of hydrochloric acid is doubled would the initial rate change obviously the initial rate will become faster and then the second question is will the total volume of hydrogen gas change now bearing in mind that now magnesium is limiting when we increase the amount of hydrochloric acid present it is not going to have an effect on the total volume of gas produced because regardless of how much hydrochloric acid you use um, the reaction will stop once magnesium um, is fully reacted 
Alright, so in this case, the final volume will be the same as before. Alright, now for this particular case, since the total volume of gas produced is the same as before, we need to look at the very third point, which is the time at which the reaction completes. Now, given that the volume of gas produced is the same, and the speed of reaction for re experiment 2 is faster, it, it is ex therefore expected to be complete at an earlier time than experiment 1. Right? So please do bear in mind that when you are drawing the curve, right, the curve for experiment 2 must reach the plateau or must reach, must reach gradient equals to 0 at a time that's earlier than experiment 1. Right, so the one in red is experiment 2, the one in black is experiment 1. Next, we will look at the effect of particle size on the shape of the graph. We are looking at the exact same reaction. So we are still monitoring the volume of hydrogen gas produced with time. Now the difference between experiment 1 and 2 is that experiment 1, we are using magnesium strips. Whereas experiment 2, we are using magnesium powder. Alright, so based on what we have learned in the last lesson, um, like the experiment 2 is definitely going to be faster than experiment 1. Why? Because the total surface area available or exposed for reaction is higher. Now if the curve given represents that obtained for experiment 1, um, we are going to try to sketch the curve for experiment 2. And bearing in mind that the um, we are using magnesium powder now, so we would expect the initial rate to be faster. Now assuming that we are using the same mass of magnesium in both experiments, so the only difference here is that one of them we are looking at magnesium strips, the other one magnesium powder. Now assuming that we are using equal mass, there will be no change to the final volume of uh, hydrogen gas produced. So once again, um, we have the same volume of hydrogen gas produced. The speed of reaction for experiment 2 is faster. So as a result of that, it is going to go to completion faster than experiment 1. All right. A common mistake that students tend to make is this. So assuming this is the curve for experiment 1, uh, many students will recognize that the speed of reaction is faster. So they will draw a steeper initial gradient. But then somehow along the way, the curve would end at the same time as experiment 1. And that is incorrect. All right. If the total volume of gas produced is the same, with a faster speed is going to reach completion is going to the reaction is going to end faster than experiment one next we're going to look at the effect of temperature so same reaction however now the temperature is increased by two times all right so we need to ask ourselves the same uh, questions would the initial rate change when I increase the temperature from experiment 1 to experiment 2 so the answer is yes so I'm going to draw a steeper initial gradient second question would the volume of hydrogen gas change when I increase the temperature and the answer is no because temperature is not going to affect the amount of product produced so once again same volume faster speed is going to end earlier than the curve for experiment one. Okay. Next, we're going to look at the last factor of catalyst. And um, in this particular factor, we're going to look at a different reaction. In this reaction, we are looking at the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide to form water and oxygen gas. So since a gas is produced, we can again monitor the speed of reaction 
by measuring the volume of gas at specific time intervals. So the difference between experiment 1 and 2 in this uh, case is that in experiment 1 we did not use a catalyst, in experiment 2 we did. So how would the graph then change? So the same questions, when I use a catalyst would the initial rate be faster? Of course it will be faster. When I use a catalyst would it change the amount of O2 produced? And the answer once again is no. Same volume of O2, a faster speed of reaction is going to end earlier than the curve for experiment 1. So there. Now we'll apply what we have learned to an actual O-level question. So this is an MCQ question where um, we are looking at the reaction of magnesium with hydrochloric acid. It is the same as what we have always been looking at. So now if we were to analyze reaction 1 and reaction 2, um, the difference is this. In react the masses used in both reactions are different. You have more magnesium used in reaction 1 than reaction 2. There's another difference which is experiment 1 we are looking at magnesium ribbon and experiment 2 we are looking at magnesium powder. The other reagent is the same. Um, the same concentration of hydrochloric acid is used in both experiments. Um, the, the thing that we need to take note of is that there is excess of hydrochloric acid, meaning the amount of magnesium powder is going to affect the total volume of gas produced. Now bearing in mind that um, we have more magnesium in reaction 1, we would expect a larger volume of hydrogen gas produced for reaction 1 and that immediately will rule out options A and B because they end up with the same volume of hydrogen gas. Okay. The next thing that we need to take note is that Reaction 1 uses magnesium ribbon, whereas reaction 2 uses magnesium powder. So for which reaction would you expect um, to have a higher initial rate? And if you consider the factor of particle size, you will be able to arrive at the conclusion that reaction 2 should have a higher initial rate than reaction 1 which shows up as a steeper gradient at the very beginning. However, since there is a lesser amount of magnesium powder used for reaction 2, the volume of H2 will be lesser than that of reaction 1. So the correct answer here would be D. Let's look at another uh, very common O-level question. In this question, we are looking at the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. So we are monitoring the rate by measuring the volume of O2 produced. So in this case, um, there were two experiments. Instead of giving you the factor, they are giving you the graph for both. And um, they are going to ask you for which factor would produce a graph as shown for experiment 2. All right. So again, we need to look at the three points of a curve. For this question, we only need to focus on the first two points. And the first two points are again as shown. We need to compare the initial rate. And by comparing the initial rate, we can see that the speed of reaction decreases from experiment 1 to 2. Right, as we change from experiment 1 to 2, the speed of reaction decreases. The second thing that we need to look out for in such a graph is the final volume of gas produced. And if you compare the final volume of gas, you'll find that the volume of H2, sorry, uh, volume of O2 
is increased when we change from 1 to 2. Now we shall analyze the four options to see which change would actually produce curve 2 from curve 1. When, if you were to lower the temperature, um, the question that we need to ask is would the speed of reaction decrease from 1 to 2? Answer is yes. However, the second question, would the volume of O2 increase when we lower the temperature? The answer is no. So A is not correct. Now B is the correct answer. I'll come back to it after that. C, um, we are looking at the use of a catalyst. So once again, would the use of a catalyst increase the volume of O2 produced? The answer is no. All right, using a different catalyst, again, by using a different catalyst, would it increase the volume of O2 produced? The answer is also no. All right, so as mentioned, the correct answer is B, but why is that so? Why would it produce such a unique situation where the rate or the speed of reaction decreases, but the volume of gas increases? So what the change is about is that there, there is an addition of hydrogen peroxide solution to the original solution. All right, so we're adding some more hydrogen per peroxide. So if we were to add some more hydrogen peroxide to the reaction, would it increase the amount of O2 produced? The answer is yes. All right, so by adding more hydrogen peroxide, naturally we're going to produce more oxygen gas. Now why would the speed of reaction decrease then? Is we have to take note of the concentration of the hydrogen peroxide added. In this case, it's 0 0.1 mole per dm cube. All right, now I'll bring your attention to the original concentration of hydrogen peroxide. It is one mole per dm cube. All right, meaning you're adding a dilute solution to something that's more concentrated. What would you get after that is that the more concentrated solution will become less concentrated. All right, so by adding some 0 0.1 mole per dm cube hydrogen peroxide solution to the original solution, it is going to cause the concentration to drop. And when the concentration decreases, that would manifest as a decrease in the speed of reaction for experiment two.